Equality is a weird concept. We all recognize it, but can't really put into words what it actually is. An important component of the wrestling business, intensity is one of the key things that keeps viewers tuning in, whether it be a match type, a perfect feud between two feral competitors, or the intensity of the performers themselves, it's an intrinsic part of the big mad graps. It can be manufactured, both good and bad, the product of an explosive in-ring style, or the frightening ramblings of a lunatic. But when you get a wrestler that's the real deal, it is a rare and wonderful thing. They're the performers who elevate this ridiculous business from spectacle to sport. They inject a ferocity into wrestling that makes it feel like a matter of life or death, and a competitive spectacle that rivals no other. Blurring the lines between kayfabe and reality, the wrestlers on this list often delighted audiences, but were more likely to terrify them, never mind their fellow professional wrestlers. And it can be said that to be truly intense, you have to live it 365 days a year. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 most intense wrestlers ever. But before we get there, a few honorable mentions. Well, I say a few. There are a lot of intense wrestlers. So, Samoa Joe, The Undertaker, Edge, Steve Austin, Ric Flair, Ken Shamrock, Antonio Inoki, Randy Orton, Masato Tanaka, Raven, Sabu, Chris Benoit, Tommaso Ciampa, Timothy Thatcher, Umaga, Jake the Snake Roberts, Batista, Walter, Sid, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, Nick Gage, Goldberg, Brian Pillman, Triple H. And there's probably a lot more to be honest. On with the list. Join us! Number 10, The Road Warriors. The Road Warriors completely changed the game when they burst onto the scene in the 1980s. Whereas tag teams usually consisted of two good workers, two actual brothers, or a couple of fellas with big sideburns and little undies, Hawk and Animal flipped that on its head. A pair of badasses the size of buses, with face paint, weird hair, and a heavy metal aura. They took tag team wrestling into the stratosphere and inspired a legion of copycats. Their promos were dialed up to 11 as they screamed at the camera while Paul Ellering nodded in approval, and when they got in the ring, it was a whole other level of force. No selling offense, smashing into opponents like wrecking balls, never mind the awesome danger of the doomsday device, the Road Warriors were unlike anything anyone had ever seen and quickly became the biggest thing since sliced bread. But they weren't the easiest to get along with. Whether their gimmicks got to their heads, or whether they truly believed their own hype, and understandably so to be honest, the Warriors looked after number one no matter the cost. They changed finishes, they refused to lose, they made other wrestlers look like idiots, and dared them to say something about it. Other professionals legitimately feared Hawk and Animal, and it only helped their legend. Number 9. New Jack the original gangster was one of ECW's most popular stars. A no-nonsense lunatic with a penchant for battering people with weapons and diving off of massive structures, New Jack was a true attraction for the Philadelphia-based brand. But New Jack's in-ring exploits were not for the faint of heart. This was no WWE trash can and kendo stick hardcore, nor was it the jaw-dropping ridiculousness of, say, an FMW. New Jack was just a violent man who was known to take liberties in the ring. There was the infamous mass transit incident, where he deeply cut a rookie wrestler who was, in fact, underage, which nearly landed New Jack in prison. There was the incident where he beat the stuffing out of Gypsy Joe with a baseball bat, and the Danbury Fall where New Jack yeeted himself and Vic Grimes 20 foot in the air off of scaffolding, Grimes bouncing off of Jack's head, fracturing his skull and giving him brain damage. Rather than chalk it up as a freak accident, New Jack instead tried to legit kill Grimes in a follow-up match, and laughed it off in interviews when he admitted to failing. Goodness me. Number 8. Scott Steiner Scott Steiner was always intense in the ring. His early matches tagging with brother Rick were exemplified by this huge mulleted freak of nature knocking heads clean off of shoulders and throwing opponents around the place like it was nothing. The Steiners were revolutionary and their hard-nosed style made them box office draws in America and Japan. Then the late 90s happened and as wrestling got edgier, Scott turned into a certifiable lunatic. It was this transformation from Scotty to Big Popper Pump that ratcheted Steiner's intensity through the roof. 
He was still a powerhouse in ring, but his eccentric personality came to the fore. Whether it was going off script to scream bloody murder about Ric Flair, yelling at the announce team whenever they said Hurricane Ranas instead of Frankensteiners, or even the time he came to the ring with an actual live tiger for no apparent reason, Steiner was a must-see performer, his unpredictability a great source of entertainment in WCW's dying days. But older age has mellowed Steiner, and when he's not signing autographs for his fans, he's getting banned from the WWE Hall of Fame for threatening to kill Hulk Hogan, or using any opportunity to seemingly demand a real fight with Triple H and the entire McMahon family. Ah. Oh. Number 7. Roddy Piper an icon of the business and a genuine pop culture crossover star, Roddy Piper made his name with his manic promos and ruthless antics in the ring during the height of the rock and wrestling era. While his work in WWE sometimes bordered on the comedic, you always believed that Piper was a personal slight away from becoming enraged. But Piper's prime was his work in the territories in the 1970s and early 80s, where he was more unhinged, more violent, and far more menacing. Like others on this list, you couldn't tell the difference between work and shoots with Hot Rod, and often, neither could he. Piper once smashed a full beer bottle into his own face to show his determination and dedication before facing the ultra-violent sheep herders, delivering a trademark promo as blood poured out of his glass-filled forehead. And it wasn't just on the mic where Piper was intense. Take the infamous dog collar match with Greg Valentine for Jim Crockett, a match so physical and heated that it led to Piper losing most of the hearing in his left ear. Or how about the insane Hollywood backlot brawl, which, for all its flaws, was still an intensely enjoyable watch, and only someone of Hot Rod's hot-headed nature could have pulled it off. Number 6. Dynamite Kid Dynamite Kid Tom Billington is one of the most influential wrestlers of all time, one of the most intense, and also one of the most complex. An innovator of the junior heavyweight style, Dynamite's in-ring work was fast, meticulous, and high impact, a whirlwind of stiff shots, snap suplexes, and high-risk dives. He was a sensation wherever he worked, Britain, Japan, Canada, and spells in WWE with cousin Davey Boy Smith as the British Bulldogs. But while his prowess between the ropes was turning heads, his attitude backstage raised eyebrows. A notorious hard man and a bully, Dynamite had a short fuse, and often clashed with other the wrestlers. He broke Bruce Hart's jaw in a fight, and his bullying of Jacques Rougeau got so intense that Jacques snapped and punched several of Dynamite's teeth out with a fistful of quarters. There are also numerous allegations of domestic abuse and plentiful stories and accusations from other wrestlers who fell on his bad side. His intensity in the ring may have been his greatest asset, but it was also the cause of his downfall. His style was so frenetic and hard-hitting that it caused a myriad of health complications in later life, confining Dynamite to a wheelchair before he turned 40. True to form, he claimed to regret nothing and said that he would have done it all over again exactly the same. Number 5. Minoru Suzuki If you don't get pumped when Minoru Suzuki's theme hits, are you even alive? Put simply, Suzuki is hard as nails, and his aggressive, relentless nature in the ring is no mere gimmick. An Olympic wrestling hopeful, Suzuki switched to pro wrestling in the late 1980s and gained a reputation as a genuine badass. So badass was he that he founded a hybrid wrestling MMA promotion so he could legit batter people, including UFC icon Ken Shamrock. Once he'd had enough of that, he wrestled throughout Japan with stints in All Japan, Pro Wrestling Noah, and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Watching Suzuki, you feel like you're looking at a man with a death wish and underpants full of angry hornets. No matter who he faced, Suzuki would go at them with unmatched ferocity. Like when he got into a stiff slap fight with Toshiaki, I will literally kick your head into the front row Kawada in the G1. Even today in his 50s, he's still an intense wrestling machine, putting on excellent match after excellent match, and kicking the absolute ass off of every single young lion in New Japan in between. Number 4. Kurt Angle For this list, we could have easily put Ken Shamrock in here, and while the world's most dangerous man is one of the most intense performers WWE has ever seen, no one ever thought he was going to wrestle himself to death now, did they? The same can't be said about Kurt Angle. 
One of the greatest in-ring performers of all time, Angle was introduced to WWE audiences spouting about the three eyes: intensity, integrity, and intelligence. And it was his intensity in the ring that propelled him to the top of the company. Even before stepping foot in a professional wrestling ring, Angle had already won an Olympic gold medal with a broken freaking neck. And it was clear that wild horses were not going to stop him from wrestling the way that he wanted to wrestle. More broken necks came, as well as plenty of other injuries, and Vince McMahon became legitimately concerned that Angle would perish mid-match. But that wasn't going to stop Kurt, who simply moved to TNA and continued to increase his blood pressure. Especially when performing as the wrestling machine, Angle's intensity could not be matched. I mean, remember when he screamed, TAP OR I'LL BREAK YOUR FLUFFING ANKLE at The Rock? Incredible scenes. Number 3. Stan Hansen while he may look like your dad drunk at a barbecue and comes across in interviews like a giant teddy bear, in his heyday, Stan the Lariat Hansen was a half-blind wrecking machine who would smash anyone's head in for fun. Portraying a violent cowboy who wanted to fight everybody, Hansen did just that, fighting anyone who would step to him across America and Japan. In the US, he legit broke Bruno Sammartino's neck in their first encounter, while in Japan his hard-hitting take-no-crap persona made him a megastar, and his stiffer-than-a-stale-baguette lariat became one of the most feared moves in wrestling history. Even on his way to the ring, fans were terrified of him, swinging a bull rope around and usually smacking several audience members with it in his wake, and when he got on the mic, he yelled incoherently while black chewing tobacco spit flew out of his face at 80 miles an hour. Oh, and also, he once punched Vader in the face so hard that his eye popped out. Let me repeat that, he punched actual grizzly bear Big Van Vader in the face so hard that his eye popped out of its socket. Number 2. Randy Savage My close personal friend P. Diddy once said that he was the definition of half man, half drugs, yet he could not hold a candle to the coked up ferocity of macho man Randy Savage at his absolute pomp. Whether Savage was or wasn't on a ton of illegal substances is neither here nor there, as regardless, he is one of the most intense performers in wrestling history. As the ruthless Intercontinental Champion, his in-ring performances were fast, aggressive, and unpredictable. While his promos have gone down in legend with Savage screaming until blue in the face, veins popping out of his neck, yammering on about everything from coffee to monkeys to freakouts, ooh yeah! And he never let up. At any moment in his career, you expected Savage to just pop off and explode, whether as the Macho King, as part of the NWO, or even later in his career when he was running around WCW in a string vest, getting showered in poo by Kevin Nash. Like others on this list, Savage's public persona and private life blurred together, and it was hard at times to know where Randall Poffo ended and Randy Savage began. His paranoia and overprotectiveness of Miss Elizabeth spring to mind, and while it produced some of the greatest wrestling stories ever, it took its toll on everyone involved. Number 1. Bruiser Brody No one in wrestling history has been as intense as Bruiser Brody. A 6 foot 8 violent hulk of a man, Brody was a pioneer of hardcore wrestling, swinging a chain around his head like Ghost Rider as the audience legged it, and throwing whatever he could get his hands on at wrestlers, staff, and fans with no Fs given. Brody was a megastar, especially in Japan, where his unorthodox brawling style was greeted with reverence and petrified wonder. He bled buckets and had a scarred up forehead to match the best of them, while he made his opponents bleed buckets too. His wars with Abdullah the Butcher were as violent as they were popular, while clashes with icons such as Antonio Inoki and Ric Flair only cemented his legend. But as intense as he was to the fans, it was a whole other ball game to his co-workers. Brody was unpredictable and difficult, and if he didn't want to do something, then he just wouldn't do it. There was the time he just stopped selling during a cage match with Lex Luger and the future narcissist froze like a deer in headlights, or the myriad of stories of him stiffing opponents, threatening promotions, motors, and using his imposing frame to make sure business was done on Brody's terms. Unfortunately, it's believed by some that Brody's blunt nature led to his murder, with some speculating it was his liberty taking in matches with Invader 1 that motivated the Puerto Rican star to stab Brody in cold blood. 